Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to usher you in through your work week. It's Wednesday, September the 12th, and I'm here to tell you everything that you need to know what's happening in and around the city of Missoula and beyond. But let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. It's getting colder out there, folks, and it is a high of 66 that's happening tonight with a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms uh, with a low of 42. So we're basically kind of at the low end, only going to get warmer from here on out. Um, Thursday, expect uh, highs to be 64 and remain in the 60s until this weekend where you have those slight chances of showers going into the weekend. But of course, I'll have your whole weekend uh, information this Friday as well. So it's looking like the weather is starting to get a little more damper, a little bit colder. So uh, some of the fires in the area are looking a little more contained. Um, fire crews are working hard on making things happen as well. So we're going to uh, skip over local news and go over to state news. Idaho has prescribed burns the other week, uh, which resulted in smoke particulate matter to reach about 100 average, which is considered unhealthy for everybody, according to the Montana Department of Environmental Quality. So last Friday, smoke got pretty bad from prescribed burns, but pretty much cleared up by uh, Saturday's end. In towns in Montana, another prescribed burns turned, in, turned into a wildfire with 250 to 450 uh, acres are currently uh, no structures were burned, no injuries were reported, and uh, Highway 12 has uh, reopened. Uh, Broadwater uh, County Disaster and Emergency Service said in Facebook announcement that nine homes are in pre-evacuation orders as of right now. Um, Howe Ridge Fire is at 20% containment at about 14,000 acres. Powell Ridge Fire is 45% contained, and of course both are due to be contained by November 1st, while the Brownstone Fire, which is one of the closest fires to the Missoula area, is 3,800 acres at 0% containment and is due into October 1st. So those are some of the dates of when uh, fire crews and hotshot crews will be uh, estimating that the containment of the fire. Um, here is a website. Uh, it's called Incineweb. Uh, so if you go to incineweb.gov, you can see all the fires that are happening in the area. And of course, you know, there's the Powell Ridge Fire, you know, 1,004 acres, 45 content. 45% containment. You have, uh, of course, the Sadler fire, which is just below the Brownstone fire. Um, that one is about three acres large. Um, it's uh, 18 hours ago. So that's kind of what's happening then and there. So let's uh, go back a little bit and let's talk about what's happening in Missoula. Uh, Lee Enterprise has closed the Missoula Independent after uh, a year of ownership. Since 1991, the Independent was created to tell news in a weekly format, an alternative news place. Um, this was around the same time, of course, MCAT was actually created in the early 90s. Um, in the city of Missoula to create another voice for people to listen aside from the Missoulian and local news stations. According to uh, Matt Gibson, general manager for the Missoulian Valley Republic and the Independent, um, the Independent has uh, considerably lost money for its owners and is not financially sustainable. So Gibson sold to Lee Enterprises, uh, wait, wait, I'll, um, with the paper lost in revenue, uh, which uh, resulted in closure of the independent. Um, many employees were uh, sent uh, emails along with their emails being disabled from the independent along with a uh, sign at the independent saying that they are no longer in operation. So a lot of the employees uh, are kind of uh, still on the ticket until October 10th. So it's kind of like they have a month to kind of figure out what they're going to do. Uh, so the in the U.S., weekday print uh, circulation has shrunk from a high of nearly 60 million in 19... 94 to 35 millions for combined print and digital uh, circulation today, 24 years of decline. Uh, advertising revenue has uh, uh, cratered, falling from $65 billion in 2000 to less than $19 billion in 2016. Um, newsroom employment fell nearly 40% between 1994 and 2014, all according to the Washington Post article did last March. Um, in state news, Idaho, oh, actually, wait, sorry, I, I already did state news. Um, in national news, why uh, swaths of uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia are preparing to the arrival of Hurricane Florence, which is a Category 4 storm with winds exceeding 130 miles per hour of sustained winds, which will bring dangerous flooding and storm surges. Florence is expected to be large, a uh, slow storm, dropping massive quantities of rain on already waterlogged land, with consequences extending well beyond the coast, far inland where evacuees will be taking refuge. Flooding and power loss are still a serious risk. Uh, FEMA 
email recommends that anyone fleeing the hur- a hurricane to take an emergency supply kit with them, including several days worth of water, food, and any necessary medical supplies, as well as flashlights, extra batteries, first aid kit, and baby wipes for personal hygiene. Florence is expected to hit uh, tomorrow and early Friday. Uh, evacuations uh, orders are going into effect for nearly the entire coast of North and South Carolina. So those are some of the news items that are happening um, in the nation and uh, locally here. So I'm going to throw a little uh, programs for you guys so you get to s- see what's new on MCAT. Kicking off with uh, the Celtic Fest, which is going to be playing. When the crusader came to, to the Levant, it was horrible. First, they set up feudal, repelling the West, feudal territory. They, are, they wanted to become their own master, their own lord, right? And they treated the, the local population very badly. Overtaxed them, despised them. It was a colonial situation. So did they redeem? Did they save souls? We don't know. Maybe uh, some Muslim population converted. The Jews rarely converted, you know, at the time. Uh, this is very, very strange. But it, it echoes with our, some of our political, social political uh, reality of today, right? So this unification discourse was perhaps a beautiful discourse, but in pra- practically it didn't work. I feel like when I see those things, and I remember the scene in the movie theaters, and I think I was probably the only black person in the movie theaters, or in movie theater, and I just seen like the reaction on what was going on, and I was laughing because I'm like, that's exactly how I feel. But then, yeah, in my in the room, I'm like, oh yeah, no one, like you can get an idea, but it's like that, that's like day to day for me. But uh, when it comes to like progression in my life, I just know that's the only way I can progress is by being uncomfortable because it's a situation I've never done before or yeah I don't know how to go about that so that brings discomfort. I, I call him Zach and or Jake and or what is it? Uh, Jack and Jack and Zake. So it's okay to. How's that? Is that better? And, well, does that sound good? That's good. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> I was worried about hunching over and stuff. So. You love it down. Yeah. We good? That's good. All right. All right. I was a little bit. Uh, I told one of my friends I was a little bit worried about making a fool of myself, and he said, "When have you ever been worried about that?" And that kind of helped. So. So, I, so here it goes. Um, when I was a teenager, uh, I had an English teacher give me the book, A River Runs Through It. And I've been a passionate fisherman my whole life. And when I was 21 years old, I moved out to Montana and transferred from the Adirondacks in upstate New York. And thank you, it's a cool country. And uh, I lived on the Blackfoot for four years. Uh, started guiding, met my wife, came down for a widespread show, had a lot of fun. And uh, I lived not too far from the White Horse for many years there. Um, but uh, I got the chance to fish with John McLean in 2004, where he gave me some of Norman's flies that I have. So that's a pretty cool thing after being so close to this since I was young. And I've been now on the water 25 years, and I've got a lot of memories of the Blackfoot. Um,
lot of great programs available for any of you to access by logging on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your local resources for everything Missoula. Hey, if you want, um, and of course, if you, if you want us to cover anything that we may have missed out on, you can always go to our How Do I Link request event recording, or if you already have a program for us, we'll more than likely uh, uh, put it on our channel. All you got to do is click on the Submit a Program as well. Um, all you got to do is go to MCAT.org, and also what all, um, MCAT offers um, is is we uh, record local gov government meetings, and which brings me to my next segment, which I like to call... City Council Report. I don't... Okay, so let's... <laughs> anyways, let's start with the City Council Report. And uh, Mayor John Ingen is talking about Suicide Prevention Week. So here is John Ingen. Whereas this proclamation recognizes suicide as a community-wide problem and suicide prevention as requiring a community effort, and whereas Montana's suicide rate is the highest in the nation, and has ranked among the top five states with the highest rates of suicide for the last four decades. And whereas since 2015, Missoula has suffered 114 suicides. And whereas suicide by firearm accounts for 51% of all suicides in the United States and 68% of suicides in Missoula. And guns stored in the home are used for suicide 40 times more often than for self-defense. And whereas it is estimated that more than 5 million people in the U.S. are survivors of suicide, those who have lost loved ones to suicide, and in Montana there are more than 1,700 new survivors each year. And whereas our community should support suicide prevention efforts to the maximum extent possible with initiatives like Project Tomorrow Montana, which works to re reduce Missoula County suicide deaths and attempts, through educational programs and evidence-based policy. Now, therefore, in coordination with National Suicide Prevention Week, I, John Ingen, Mayor of the City of Missoula in the state of Montana, do hereby recognize the week of September 7th through 15th, 2018, as Suicide Prevention Week. And All right, so that was the city's proclamation. Uh, the organization that's putting this on is the Missoula Count City County Health Department in conjunction with Project Tomorrow. Um, Project Tomorrow is an organization that... Uh, helps people who are going through uh, depression and uh, there's a crisis call uh, as well. You can go to Missoula C City County Health website in conjunction with Project Tomorrow to find out dates um, about upcoming events that are happening during uh, Suicide Prevention Week. Moving on, the Lighting District uh, job is to light the downtown Missoula area and last year's assessment bill totaled $364,047.14 to light the downtown Missoula area. And this year, assessments are less. So uh, overall assessments are, are de will decrease by $4,542 or Oh, ooh, sorry about that. Uh, negative 1.25% of last fiscal year. Uh, Marty Rabine talks about growth and uh, also mentions that Stockman Bank will be inserting um, new power, uh, um, energy efficient um, street lights. Um, so the new Stockman Bank on the corner of West Broadway and Orange Street is installing some new energy efficient lighting. And that is uh, the front the front footage along West Broadway Street is in uh, street lighting district number 18. Um, but they are also bringing them down the sides of the building. So we need to extend the boundaries of street lighting district number 18 um, along um, I think it's uh, Woody and, I'm like looking at my referral here, uh, Orange Street, and uh, the one, the, it extends already along North Broadway, so the boundaries will come down a little bit down Orange Street, a little bit down Woody Street in order to, co to uh, incorporate that new energy efficient lighting that they're installing as part of the bank project there. All right, so that is uh, one of many things that the city is doing. Um, they uh, put a motion, uh, an amended motion on the thing to talk about how they can expand on putting, um, replacing a lot of the street lights for more energy efficient street lights as well. The city wants to add an, an, a new energy efficient lighting whenever they can and Brian Las Von Lossberg wants to request that the Northwestern Energy give a cost estimate for replacing uh, current lighting systems in the uh, Missoula downtown um, city uh, limit area. The, basically the street lights that the city owns. So Brian Von Lossberg talks a little bit more about this as well. 
uh, the infrastructure that's there, the opportunity uh, to improve that infrastructure, particularly from an energy efficiency standpoint. This community has um, clearly expressed its interest in energy efficiency and energy conservation, and uh, this request is entirely consistent with that. And I think there's a good example um, in Mr. Abine's report about the energy efficient lighting, um, indeed, that Stockman Bank is using in their area. So I, I think the, the requests, um, as I said, uh, hopefully will start a productive conversation uh, between the, the utility and the city, and I look forward to our energy conservation manager, Chase Jones, um, being able to use that data and um, uh, be an integral part of that conversation. Thanks. All right, so many years ago, uh, Jason Weiner took up the mantle of why the city doesn't own their own street lights since they are paying for the costs associated with lighting the downtown area, So, which resulted in a lighting district, which uh, overall resulted in the city starting to own more and more of the downtown street lighting, expanding the zoning area, and having a more cost-efficient um, deal with that as well. But the um, some of the issues with owning utility is that you have to pay the bill for that utility, um, not necessarily uh, like owning versus renting. That's that's always been a thing with a lot of things. Of course, the city will issue a formal request to Northwestern Energy uh, to provide a financial analysis, inventory assess assessment, and ongoing management plan uh, demonstrating the value and service re uh, received in connection with the rates charged for street lighting billed to the city of Missoula citywide. There were some props given to John DeBarre, who was taking up the mantle from Jason uh, uh, Weiner, who started to ask question of why we don't own our own poles. Um, Jesse Ramos later in the meeting, of course, alludes to uh, the seven hour, 48 minute meeting that happened uh, a couple weeks ago. So this is Jesse Ramos to um, talk about how he uh, feels. Well, um, myself and my fellow council members vote yes uh, the majority of the time together. Um, so there's far more that unites us than divides us. And I think that there's some misinformation out there that um, I hate my fellow council members. That I think they're committing fraud, yada, yada, yada. That, that, is no, uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. We just happen to disagree on uh, a few issues regarding the budget. So I just wanted to say for the record that I have deep respect for uh, many of the folks on council. Uh, we have uh, an attorney. We have uh, actual rocket scientists. Uh, uh, we have a doctor. We have uh, so many people, so many talents. And I just wanted to state that, that I know that uh, this can be divisive, but I truly enjoy working with everybody. Um, and as far as uh, Councilwoman Harp and the knitting goes, I just wanted to go on the record and say that uh, she takes some of the most detailed notes that I've ever seen, and she's always helpful to me uh, whenever I need her, and uh, she's one of the nicest people I know, so I just want to go on the record and state that. Um, All right, so that was Jesse Ramos uh, just uh, kind of alluding to the last meeting as well. This meeting wrap up just before 8 a.m., uh, but of course you can watch this full meeting by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Um you also can go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is another resource for you guys to be able to watch your city council meeting. But we air it on our channel, Channel 190, all the time for the next uh, week. So you guys can check it out on our channel, 189. But uh, p please support MCAT by subscribing to Charter Cable. And if you already do, thank you very much. All right, let's move on to um, Bonner Milltown Community Council. Yes, I'm doing a little bit of Bonner as well. Monday night, uh, Bonner Milltown met, um, and this was a fairly interesting meeting because uh, Bonner Milltown is one of the uh, towns on the rise since they're uh, starting a Bitcoin operation, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, Pastor Eric uh, Husteff uh, from Our Savior's Lutheran Church thinks Bonner is ready for a community center. So this is... Him. What kinds of things can we partner in, can we do, um, to maybe help incorporate uh, a community space going forward? And so we've done, the uh, last couple of years, done a lot of kinds of research um, things. We've, we've done about 30 community uh, member interviews uh, in this Two Rivers area. We have done a uh, full teacher Bonner School teacher and staff survey as well. Um, and there are several kind of components, data points that came out of these different initiatives that we found as a church. Um, the first one was that Bonner, um, from at least the data that we found and the people that we talked to, Bonner is looking for some identity. Who is, what is this area? All right, so, um, 
A little bit more of background on this as well. Uh, Bonner has uh, recently opened the Milltown State Park, um, and people at the meeting uh, weren't necessarily against the idea. They never spoke against it. They also didn't really speak for it. Bonner Milltown Community Council will have a committee to actually see if this is possible for Bonner. So they're going to do some research, ask some questions. So if you're in the Bonner area or if you just wish to support it, you can uh, look them up on their Facebook page on Bonner Milltown Community Council. Um, September 27th is uh, when the county commissioners will uh, meet to talk about Bitcoin operations, particularly the noise uh, that, that was complained about the uh, Bitcoin operation as well. So uh, county Commissioner Dave Strohmeyer uh, stopped by the uh, Bonner Milltown Community Council to give a couple words about this. Interim or emergency zoning in Missoula County that would um, prohibit uh, new or, or expanded cryptocurrency mining operations. Something that we're going to have on the table for this meeting is instead of that as an option, one thing that we heard loud and clear was um, noise is an issue, certainly in this community, and rather than taking a blanket approach to a specific industry, looking at uh, uh, regulation in Missoula County that would deal with a specific impact like noise, uh, because that really is uh, uh, at least one of the underlying concerns. So All right, so this is a... Uh, uh, um Commissioner Dave Strohmeyer talking a little bit about that. Um, the uh, county will be doing this meeting on, I think it's Thursday, September uh, 27th, and they usually do their meetings on Thursday afternoons around 2 p.m. So if you want to schedule and you want to talk about this as well. But also, I wanted to also allude to the fact that last month they replaced all the fans um, on the, of course, I already mentioned this before in a couple other uh, weekly stories, but um, the Bitcoin uh, Project Spokane, the Bitcoin operation that was happening at the Bonner Milltown site, which created a large hum for about a year and a half for residents in the Bonner area, which caused a lot of them to complain. And of course, you probably heard about this in news and stuff like that. But what they did is that they replaced a lot of the metal fans that they already had on the roof with uh, carbon fiber fans. And uh, so at this meeting, Steve Nelson, along with uh, people from Big Sky Acoustics uh, mentioned uh, the improvements and some of the people in the meeting as well said that they are happy with the results. Yeah, and, th and again, like Steve said, thank you guys for being patient. I know it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy on us either. Um, and hopefully we can kind of move forward from here. Has there been anybody that has noticed the difference? I've so not heard anybody yeah. So say far, anything is, other yeah. than what you guys have said. Yeah. Oh, now, awesome. three or four of the people that were, they're not here today, which tells me that they must be okay. <laughs> All right. So that was uh, towards the end of the uh, meeting where they had they, they had this op an open discussion item at the Bonner Milltown Community Council. Uh, to talk about this, of course, since August, Project Source Scan and Big Sky Acoustics have replaced the noisier fans with carbon fiber fans, which not only reduces the sound, but also changes the tone of the hum, which apparently was the result of a lot of people's annoyances because it was all about the tone um, that they figured out. And so the tone changed, and also the fans have decreased uh, significantly, but not as much as people were, were thinking because they said that it would be like a uh, 20, 30 decibel point decrease, which which is a, a which to many people they also uh, alluded that it, it wasn't much of a big impact but when they actually in, inserted the fans there's a huge vast improvement in the area and a couple of the residents who live nearby the uh, bitcoin operation say that they can open the windows at night as well so of course the meeting is available at mcat.org all you got to do is click on the channel link on channel 190 so once again uh I just want to allude to this wonderful wonderful uh, website where you can find all the information about mcat but I just want to do a, a, a reminder since we're here, we have Animation for Kids. It's Saturday drop-ins are back. And if anybody uh, uh, has a kid age uh, 9 to 13 who's interested in stop animation or just basic, uh, uh, I guess I want to say media arts, they can come on down every Saturday from 1 to 5. Wake Up Missoula. You can learn more about Wake Up Missoula and all our interviews and all the community events that happen uh, by going on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. I gather information from all over Missoula-centric information, and I present it to you guys in a more uh, smaller section as well, a smaller chunk. But of course, you guys can check out those uh, resources as well. I always mention those resources on my morning show for you guys so you guys can um, 
know more about what's happening in Missoula, and you can uh, look at it yourself. So without further ado, I'm going to take a break, but I'm going to give you guys a little chance to see a little bit of dubbing stuff, uh, which is a public, public domain movie set in uh, 1952 called um, The Big Trees, which stars Kirk Douglas. So here is a dubbing stuff. Man, I tell you, Pinky, I'm gonna own this town. What about me? You're gonna be right beside me, owning it with me. Okay. Oh, wait. Whoa, 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 what do we have here? Thought I told you to get out of town, Dukes. Which way is out? North? South? East? East, to be perfectly honest. I want you to skip town, and I don't want you to ever be here again. You let go of my boy, Pinky, you hear? That's right. No need to escalate things, Duke. You got enough bolts for all of us? Bing. I'm just here to protect what's mine. The bank seized your Beanie Baby collection, and if you want it back, you gotta pay your debts. In full, with interests. Those interests have made me the desperate man you see before you. You don't think I know that? Let's take a look here. You have to return Babette the Lamb, Duchess the Poodle, Eggs 2008 the Bear, Fluffball the Guinea Pig, Hops be the Rabbit. The hero reveals himself into the city, and everybody cheers. I have arrived. Hmm. What do we got going on here? Allow myself to introduce myself. You grabbed me earlier. My name is Pinky, Pinky Tedeschi, and you were messing with the wrong people. Well, it's not people you should be worried about. It's your stuffed animal friends. <laughs> this town is itching for a hanging. I got six bullets to put you down for good. And they're all aiming at you, buddy. Hmm. Things seem to be escalating. What's your take on this Beanie Baby standoff? Heh, <laughs> you see over there? There's a damsel in distress. Listen, I don't care too much about your Beanie Baby collection, but don't you think you're taking Just this a little too- Just give the man back his Beanie Babies. Sure there's a couple Are that are worth something right there. I never saw such exquisite beauty before, and I knew she had to be mine. Well, how long do you plan on keeping this going? You should at least talk to her to see if you even like her. What if you make a mistake and you're stuck with her forever? One thing you can bet on is that I'll never die. <laughs> oh, um, no, I'm losing track of this story. Now just give us the money. Oh, you think so? I don't even know what I'm supposed to sound like. You're supposed to sound like this. Kapow! Bang, bang, bang! Oh, no, you don't. The heroic hero walks up to the damsel. You, and you says, guys are monsters! I was you talking. better stop fighting. Well, we better stop fighting because apparently there's a more interesting plot happening next door. Quite an interesting standoff, don't you think? I beg your pardon. Looks like you're about to step in mud. Well, I'll just hike up my dress. The hero decides to be chivalrous and lift the lady oh! across the way. You're just gonna have to lift me back. <laughs> I am immortal. Well, here's for your troubles. Oh, sweet! A quarter! Hey guys, we're at the half. Now let's talk to let's talk about uh man, I, I just like I, I know what I'm thinking, but I, I, I think way too ahead. So let's talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula, okay? So starting this morning, it's one last car day party part of uh uh wa Walk and Roll Week. So Walk and Roll Week is a week, uh, actually Walk and Roll, uh, so it's to uh, prevent people from driving, and it's, well, not to prevent people from driving, it's to uh, give a more of a, a conscience, uh, conscientious um, approach when it comes to uh, traveling to work and so forth, and going on your grocery shopping. So of course, Missoula's second annual One Less Car Day is in conjunction with uh, Walk and Roll Week, is a community-wide initiative to get as many people as possible to travel using sustainable modes of transportation, bike, walk, bus, carpool, or van pool. On Wednesday, of course, this morning, you will join the movement to reduce the congestion, lowering the carbon footprint, save money, and improve individual community health. Take the pledge on one last car at MissoulaInMotion.com. Coffee outside Missoula, various locations around Missoula, they do this uh, once a month, and it helps benefit uh, organizations and in a week of uh, bike commuters from 7.15 to 8.15. Of course, they already did this for various locations. Uh, they bring uh, camp coffee setups, water, and mugs. Of course, if you already noticed some people around this morning um, near the bike trails and stuff like that, you can get some free coffee along with that as well. Of course, all the indoor sports arena type stuff. So if you guys are planning on having your kids indoors into safe 
padded areas. Um, Mismo Gymnastics at Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and Roots Acker Sports Center are the place to be. Starting as early as 9 a.m. and going to about 11. Of course, there is a little break between, so they have also some afternoon programs as well. I kind of gloss over it because they're just uh, they cost like $10, $15 per person, and of course, they have some deals for siblings. Missoula Public Library is every Wednesday. They do a, a branch library stuff, so uh, not at Missoula Public Library, but they sponsor this event, and it's going to be at the Missoula Food Bank for Tiny Tales, Storytime at Frenchtown Branch, and there's a good way to get kids engaged in a community reading um, meetup, basically. So, uh, semicolon tattoo day today at American Made Tattoo. Uh, American Made is pleased to announce that their second annual semicolon tattoo day, uh, which is today. It happens basically from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. with all proceeds benefi benefiting um, MLMC, aka Joey's Place. Semicolon tattoos will uh, be done in the first come first serve basis with a minimum donation of $20 and a suggested donation of $50. Last year, event raised $4,700 to help the MLMC begin its mission to bring Missoula County uh, together and. Uh, changing the stigma behind mental illness and suicide. Engineering with special guest uh, Jalen Naylor is at Spectrum Discovery Center starting at 11 a.m. Hovercrafts are kicking off this afternoon around 3 p.m. And also around 3 p.m. Middle School Writers Group, hey, you want to improve your writing skills? Any kid age uh, in grades six to nine can enjoy middle school's writer, middle school writers group, and they have a little chocolate to entice the kids who like chocolate. Uh, Polymer Clay's jewelry is going to be at Hellgate Elementary. So Hellgate Elementary is doing an after uh, early evening event where they interested in making. Um, creative jewelry with a wide range of techniques available to the craftsperson. Students will learn the basics of using polymer clay and several techniques for making pieces of jewelry. And also, Missoula Mayhem is ha happening at the Karis Park Pavilion, so if you're going by uh, Karis Park off Higgins Bridge, you can, you can see the uh, gravel ride through the residential roads, dirt tracks, and single tracks around Missoula. You can bring lights and jackets and other surprises you need. This is a a self-supported ride experience and comfort and light mountain bike is, is a plus and they like to keep it upbeat it's not fast paced for these rides but they, of course they will group at top of the long climbs and bottom of the long descents uh, gather from 6 30 to 6 and you roll at 6 sharp and the route is to be determined so this is kind of like a ghost trail so they'll give you an idea of where you're going to be riding your bike starting at 5 30 6 o'clock and if you're interested in um, doing some 3D printing and learning about it, Missoula Public Library does a monthly uh, 3D uh, printing workshop at the Missoula Public Library. So starting tonight at 6.30 p.m., Missoula Public Library will be doing a printing workshop. So they're doing it at the Makerspace, and there's only six participants, uh, and you must RSVP by going on to MissoulaPublicLibrary.org. Second Wednesday night book club is happening at the Missoula Public Library starting at 7 p.m. as well. So if you uh, read the book Americana with an H at the end. Um, the Chiminad uh, Nagoshi Ajich in the, bar, in the boardroom at 7 p.m. Uh, tonight. Uh, we Breathe Again, free screening at Project Tomorrow. This is going to be at the University of Montana, a film from Native Alaskan perspective presented by the Urban Indian Health Center as part of the Suicide Prevention Week, and a panel discussion will be following this screening. And, of course, uh, it, this is, they're probably going to be talking about the uh, overall lack of sun and a lot of the uh, dark days of the winter time that uh, doesn't really help a lot of people during these times of stress as well. And I'm going to kick things off. I'm going to uh, throw it to a uh, art clip. And this art clip will end by the end of this week, so you only have uh, so many chances to check it out. And this is going to be at the Missoula Art Museum. <laughs>
Hey guys, let's talk about some Thursday events. I'll have your Friday events this Friday as well, but let's kick things off with a little bit of Thursday. So if you guys are planning on doing some indoor family fun, YMCA kicks off their family fun day at Missoula YMCA off of their Russell Street um, facility. They believe in families need a place to play together. Uh, family Fun Time at the Y provides an indoor all-weather play place where parents can, are welcome to join the fun and happens uh, usually like Monday, t uh, Monday, um, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and usually go from 9 a.m. to about 11.30 uh, p.m. with an exception, I think, is on Friday where uh, they have it after school from like 3.30 to 5.30. So those are some of the things, and you can always go to uh, Missoula YMCA to find out more information. Brian's di Brain Dissection, um, one of our uh, summer camp kids who is now an employee's dad will be a guest uh, at Spectrum Discovery Center at 11 a.m. It's Saj Patel, and they'll be in, he'll be do talking about brain dissection, and he's doing he's been been working on a grant about concussions so you get to learn a lot about this at spectrum discovery center and these are uh, usually uh, geared for kids and if you're under three you get in free uh, and it's a great family uh, experience for a lot of kids to get hands-on learning at a science discovery center Make it and take it. Crafts at Big Sky Branch are starting up once again at uh, Big Sky High School. Thursdays are usually early out, so starting as early as 2.30 p.m. in the Big Sky High School Library. Missoula Public Library sponsored this event where kid, uh, people get a, anybody gets to come in and um, just make uh, unique crafts and gifts at Big Sky and just take it. So you can call them for more information at 728-2400. The extension number is 8605. So the uh, quintessential Missoula, Public, I mean, um, Missoula County Public School uh, phone number is 728-2400 and this extension is 8605. Sculpturing my favorite things, clay class. And the Clay Studio of Missoula, they are doing a bunch of classes and starting after school around 3.30 tomorrow afternoon. Um, and this is for kids age 5 to 10 years of age and this is going to be happening Thursday, September 12th, September 13th all the way through uh, October 4th. So this is uh, four class meetings for ages five to 10 years of age. And this is $100 per, dollars per kid. And if you're a member, it's $5 discount for members as well. Lego Club is also happening around 3.30 p.m. every single Thursday at Missoula Public Library, um, 3.30 p.m. to about five. Um, it's either in the large uh, meeting room or it's going to be at the Dragon Rug, but this is Lego Club. Anyone under 12 must be accompanied by an adult. Predator feeding is also happening at 3.30 p.m. Come see who's hungry today at the Missoula's Butterfly House. You can go to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org for more information, and it's going to be at the Missoula Insectarium. It's just across from that new Draftworks uh, Brewing Company. Not Draftworks, but um, what is that called? Uh, drought? Drought? Something like that. It's uh, basically where uh, it's behind uh, Elks Lodge. You can't miss it, and that's where they have the Missoula Insectarium. All right, Cancer and Transition St. Pat's Cancer Education Series starting at 5.30 p.m. on Thursday night. It's in conference room number two. If you or a loved one is battling cancer and interested in a whole personal care, including physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being, come to the Montana Cancer Center's Embers program. You can join by Emily Smith, who is a registered nurse, uh, Jamie uh, Bruzier, um, Glenn Bluzen, um, Kristen uh, Gerich, uh, parent navigator to dis uh, discover how this program serves the needs of cancer patients ac across western Montana. And then as, as an education series class will cover cancer and transitions. This class is free and open to the public and it starts at 530 in the conference room number two at, Missou at Missoula's St. Pat. Um, Milltown Mammals, Milltown State Park um, in Bonner. Uh, Milltown is a fairly new park that they uh, basically created after they took down the Mil uh, the Bonner uh, Dam. So uh, they're going to be uh, joined with um, fish, wildlife, and park biologist Julie Gola for the engaging presentation on the mammals found at Milltown State Park. This will be a fun for the whole family with plenty of hands-on time for kids learning events. This is a free event. And of course, for more information, you can call park manager Michael Custodia uh, at mcustodia at mt.gov or you can call them at 542-5533. Again, that number is 542-5533 for more information about Milltown State Park and their upcoming events. Voices of Hope reading in conjunction with Project Tomorrow. The Public House will be doing an event starting at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow night. It's uh, basically like by Lake Missoula Tea Company. It's off of West uh, Broadway. Local artists and read poetry and propose to shine a, light, a shine a light on darkness and of depression and despair presented by NAMI Missoula. It's free and it's a public event. 
Bingo at Missoula Senior Center. Missoula Senior Center is hosting a bingo night. It's an $18 pot for a dozen games. Win some money and have some fun with them at the Missoula Senior Center, the best dance floor in Missoula. And this is for uh, Missoulians over the age of 50. Um, and it also benefits people who are age over 50 as well. Film, three miles an hour in conjunction with Horse, Mo uh, Montana Museum of Art and Culture, Thursday, September 13th, which is happening tomorrow night around 7 p.m. Montana PBS presentation with fe uh, featured horseman Smoke Elsler and uh, producer John Twiggs in conjunction with the ex exhibition Horse, 7 p.m. at the Massacre Theater at the Par TV Center, so you can't miss it. 7 p.m., it's an original film here made in Montana. So you guys can enjoy that and more. But of course, I do want to mention that there are a couple things happening tonight. Uh, a lot of karaoke, a lot of trivia night. Karaoke is going to be at the Badlander. Karaoke is going to be the Dark Horse. They're going to have a trivia beer suit at uh, Press Box. They're going to have a trivia night at the Silver Slipper starting at 7.30 p.m. They also have a couple things happening tomorrow night if you guys are planning on going out and about because Thursday night seems to be used to, well, for me, back in my day, uh, Thursday night used to be the big night and and Saturday night used to be the big night as well because you didn't want to um, go out on a Friday night because a Grizz game would be happening on Saturday and you don't want to be worried about that. You wanted to start the day as early as possible on Saturday. So anyways, uh, starting Thursday night, Lolo Square and Round Dance Center is going to be doing a Solo Stars Fun Night Saturday at 7 p.m. Uh, big Star, Nothing Can Hurt Me is going to be a film at the Roxy. The Fun House Live at VFW is at VFW Post 209. Uh, Fun House Live will be at the VFW. Uh, they, they, put, they posted it twice. Sorry about that. It's volume. Okay. Anyways, Rocking Karaoke at the Dark Horse. Chris Lake is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be electronic DJ music happening Thursday night. So that pretty much concludes all your events that are happening. If you are interested in learning about more, more of the events that are happening in the city of Missoula, I only tip, uh, touched the tip of the iceberg. I kind of got through some of the uh, health and wellness uh, classes that they provide, that they uh, put on there as well. But you can go to MissoulaEvents.net to find out more information about that and more. If you want to learn more about me, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula to find out all your community events and past episodes as well. You can go to uh, MCAT.org to find everything video related to MCAT. So we uh, go in, we record from the very start of everything to the very end of the meeting so you can get a nice chunk of Missoula through MCAT.org. And you can also watch us on our channels 189 and 190 through Charter Cable. By subscribing to Charter Cable, you support Missoula's community media resource, which also goes to help benefit the citizens of Missoula County. All right, that pretty much does it for Wake Up Missoula. I want to thank you guys for joining me. If you have any info, if you want to uh, be on my show and you want to talk about an upcoming event, rally or cause, you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. But if you're too scared to call, you can always email us, mcat at mcat.org, with all your information and more. All right, so thanks for joining me, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful couple days. It is hump day. We're just in the middle of the week, and I'll be back Friday to talk about your weekend events and more. So stay with me um, this Friday. So thank you for joining me. Mm -hmm.